Moving to some restaurants, Starbucks uh, quite a quarter um, as we get uh, 84 beating 76. Comps up three was a little light, but when China's down 40, what are you going to do? I went back and forth with, with, uh, with Howard last night. I don't know Howard's, I don't know. I'm not going to say since he was born. We were going back and forth about things that happened in New York in the 60s and 70s. But this was an amazing quarter. First of all, he's reconfiguring the stores. He recognizes the cold brew is now what's, is what's really important. Second, these numbers, ex-China, were extraordinary. Third, he's doing his listening tour, talking with everybody. They're going to change the formats. I think that this was the beginning of the next leg Starbucks. And as I told Andrew in the previous show, my charitable trust, we have a big meeting tomorrow. I have to put this in the bullpen. It was too extraordinary. i, I got to tell you, Howard was the old Howard. It was a well-orchestrated conference call. I told him it was like when I was growing up, there was this fellow, Milton Cross. Milton Cross was the person you listened to to understand the opera, if you didn't understand. It was for legendary Metropolitan Opera, of course, brought to you by Texaco. And I would listen rap to Milton Cross to understand what the opera meant. I was rapt last night to Howard, what it meant for the sea change. Yep. Oh, my. I felt like at the end I wanted to don a green apron. <laughs> well, orange, by the way, in Mexico. Orange is Home Depot. Uh, no, in Mexico. In Mexico? Orange, yeah. Orange. I was like, where's the green apron? She said, no, this is Mexico. It was fascinating to listen to the CFO talk to Bullard on Squawk about how consumers are not only enraptured by cold brew and cold beverages, but not yet willing to trade down. And this is what Schultz said about inflation last night. While we are sensitive to the impact inflation and economic uncertainty are having on consumers, it's critically important that you all understand we are not currently seeing any measurable reduction in customer spending or any evidence of customers trading down. Which kind of collides with what Yum said a few moments ago and that the low end is actually trading down quite a bit. And KFC missed, pizza missed. Yeah, pizza has been struggling. I go back to, I had Nestle CEO on last week. Nestle's got this deal with Starbucks. That, and both confirmed that deal is working incredibly well. Now, uh, Mr. Gibbs, Dave Gibbs on, on uh, Yum, give him some credit because Taco Bell is doing high single digits and they've added a lot of units I don't think Yum, I, you know, Yum is going to trade down because he didn't blow away things. But remember, they also had a Russia problem. Russia, FX. Yeah. Uh, Taco was tr- double the estimate. Taco Bell plus eight. Pizza Hut minus three in, tr- in true numbers. KFC minus one. I, I, I'm used to KFC being a, a little bit higher than that. Uh, but we the numbers were distorted. Uh, and Ru- Russia is a real problem. Uh, Ru- they were in Russia far more than I realized. Far, far more than anybody realized. But they did add 780 gross units, meaning they're still putting them up. So if you think that uh, if you think that the stock should be sold, the customers think the stock should be bought. Mm-hmm.